I want to talk to you this morning about the secret. The secret. Tell your neighbor he's going to let us in on a secret. The secret. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, New Living Translation, it says, Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. Tell your neighbor, he'll give me everything I need. Philippians 4, 19, And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Tell your neighbor, he'll supply all your need. How many of you would like for God to supply or provide all your needs? Not just some, but all of them. How many of you uh, uh, would like to know the secret to God supplying all your needs? I will tell you the secret right now. Get God involved. It's plain, it's simple. Listen, when you come to God, I I don't think there's anything um, too hard for us to understand. He made it simple so we could all follow it. And if you want God to provide all your need, get him involved in whatever you need. Thanks, Sonny. I'm glad there's one with me. Get him involved in whatever it is that you need. How many of you would like for God to supply all your financial needs? Get God involved in your finances. Yeah, I'm talking about giving. I I really come back so Joey wouldn't have to preach two weeks in a row on giving because he was sweating last week the way it was. Not really. But this will be the final uh, message on our series in giving. But if you want God to provide all your financial needs, get him involved in your finances. Put him first. Give him first place. And, 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 And... I want to talk to you about tithes and offering, and and I've heard it all. I've had it all said to me. You're not going to tell me anything I haven't heard, but I just want to set the record straight again. I'm not after your money, and God isn't after your money. I do want God's will to be done, and I want Maranatha to accomplish all she's supposed to accomplish, but God isn't after your heart or isn't after your money. He's after your heart. Giving never has been and never will be a, a money issue. It's a heart issue because God knows we would have trouble with money. Amen. Preach, Pastor. First thing you got to understand about giving is that God owns it all and we own nothing. And I know that we work hard to, to buy things that we like and there's nothing wrong with that. But can I tell you, either somebody's going to end up with it or it's all going to burn up. You're not taking it with you. The time that you're going to enjoy it is going to be limited. We own nothing. And what you think you own, someone else is going to own it before long. And I'm at the point in my life where I'm, I'm making arrangements so that I can cover our son's ears there, honey. So, so that we can leave them something after we're gone. Because I want the next generation to be blessed more so than what I came into. I don't expect too much of it. Oh, I got Evan's attention right now. He's amening and listening to everything I'm saying now. So we own nothing. God owns it all. That's the first thing we need to understand about giving. It is all on loan to us. In Deuteronomy 10, 14, look, the highest heavens and the earth and everything in it all belong to the Lord your God. Psalm 24, 1, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all its people belong to him. Tell your neighbor, we don't own anything. There's five things I want to talk to you this morning about, about tithing. What is the tithe? What do we do with it? Why do we tithe? What does the tithe do, and what will God do when I tithe? Are you ready? If you're a note taker, write those five things down, and we'll move on. Malachi chapter 3, verses uh, 6 through 11. For I am the Lord, I do not change. Therefore you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. Yet from the days of your father you have gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. 
God says, return to me and I'll return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you say, in what way shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? Look at this. In tithes and offerings, you are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, so that there might be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour you out such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, so that he will not destroy the fruit of the ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the fields, says the Lord of hosts. First thing I want to talk about is what is tithe. The word tithe means tenth. I know this might be elementary to some of you, but just encourage everyone around you and just say an amen every now and then to make sure that you stay awake. Tithe means tenth or tenth part. It means 10% of our income. Is that gross or net? You tell me, do you want a net blessing or a gross blessing? You decide. But a tithe is undesignated, meaning that we don't tell it where it goes because it isn't ours. We give tithe and it goes to whatever God directs to be done in his kingdom. It's undesignated. In verse 8 it says, it mentions tithes and offering. Tithes belongs to God. It's not ours. We can't tell it where to go. Offering, that belongs to us. We can tell our offerings where to go. Your offering is not your tithe. It's separate. There's tithe, that's God's. That's 10%. Offering is above and beyond that. That's missions, that's, that's eggs and uh, pretzels, undie Sunday, that's offering. People's going to be thanking you for your offering because they're going to have some clean new skivvies to run around in. <laughs> tithe ye- but listen to this, tithe yields the same blessing to everyone no matter of how much or how little. Tithe is never tied to an amount. It's always tied to obedience. It's about the heart behind the giving, not the amount of the giving. Now, what do I do with it? Verse 10 says, bring all the tithe into the storehouse. Tell your neighbor all the tithe, not just some of it. Bring all the tithe, not a portion, not what you can afford. I give what I could afford. What could you afford? Nothing. God can't bless nothing. You got to give him something to bless. So it says, bring all the tithe into the storehouse. What's the storehouse? Your local church, the ministry that feeds you spiritually. Let me put it this way. You don't go to McDonald's and then run down the road and pay Burger King. Bring all the tithe into the storehouse, the the local church, the ministry that feeds you, you, what, what you consider your home church. This doesn't go to a poor cousin or the missions. This is tithe. It goes to the storehouse. Why do we tithe? It gets God involved in our finances. How many of you want God involved in your life? Then let him in. It's It's obedience to the Lord, it brings my finances into alignment with the will and the word of God. If we keep it, we are robbing God and we're cursed. Now, a lot of people don't want to preach stuff like this anymore. A lot of times people just want to preach stuff that everybody will amen and they want to hear and everybody's fine and the church is limited on what they can accomplish because there's nothing coming in financially. I'm just going to go ahead and let it all go. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me, God says. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? God says, in tithes and offerings. Then God says, you are cursed with a curse. For you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Now get a hold of this. 
There is a difference between thievery, stealing, larceny, and robbery. Rob, get this now. Robbery occurs when you threaten someone with physical bodily harm. That's robbery. When there is a threat of physical bodily harm, that's robbery. And God says that when we withhold our tithe and offering, we are robbing him. Now get this. God doesn't say you're stealing from me. When you withhold your tithes and offering, you are threatening the Lord's body. Who is the Lord's body? The church. So we have to understand that when we withhold, when we rob from God, we are hindering God's church from accomplishing and going as, as far as what he wants it to. Amen. Thanks, Richard. Appreciate that. God doesn't say that you're stealing. He says you're robbing. The word rob in the Hebrew means kabah. It means to cover. In other words, it's like covering the cup and restraining the contents from spilling out. And therefore, the body, the church, is restricted from accomplishing or receiving all that God wants it to. That's what he means by when he says, you're robbing me. It also says that we're cursed by not tithing. Well, you guys are quiet. I hope you're just in sponge mode taking it all in. That's kind of the way I was on vacation when I got to a restaurant. I just got into sponge mode. We went to this one place. It was, I think it was called a Thai fusion place. I don't know. But, Brian, they had these things that it was five spice, double fried, don't judge me, wings. That should have been part of the, the, the title. Five spice, don't judge me, double fried wings. <laughs> And I'd never had a wing like that before, but I might just make a trip to Florida just to eat another one. Had some good tacos. Had good food. Why are you talking about that? I don't know. It's just like a squirrel <laughs> moment, you know. You, it just crossed my mind, and I'm like, double fried wings. I think it was because I'm thinking, okay, I'm not getting any love from the congregation. Those double fried wings, they were loving me. <laughs> Hey, and I just went, you know. Really, I did it to loosen you up. Very seldom do I do something that there isn't a purpose behind it. At least it let me know that you're still alive and breathing. You're at least laughing now. Think double, just tell your neighbor, double fried wings. Think about that. If it was good once fried, Johnny, two. Is better than one. The Bible even says Ecclesiastes 2 are better than one. I pray for revelation before, boom, there it is. Oh, Jesus, help. They're looking scary this morning. Maybe I should have stayed away. But when we withhold it, it's like we're covering the cup that could provide supply. The neighborhood, the city of what God wants to accomplish. Many times we judge a church because, well, they're not doing this and we're not doing that. Have you ever thought that the reach is limited because of finances? Well, it's a big church. They can... Do you know why we've been able to do what we've done on limited income? Because of the stewardship of this house. Because we don't just blow money. That's one thing I'll tell you. When Joey becomes a senior pastor, you better hope to son you've retired and going on because that old boy likes to spend money. <laughs> it's just your generation, brother. I mean, that generation, they just, it, they just think it's growing on trees. They just think it's just an endless supply. It's not a cut down, brother. It just means you're going to learn how to pull the reins back. Yeah, yeah, manage, yeah. Well, 
almost a truth. I'm looking I'm like, God, he's out there in hot water. I live in hot water and thin ice. That's where I live. But a lot of times it, the, the reach of the church is limited because there aren't the finances to back it up. And everybody wants to look at the size of the building and the size of the congregation and judge what's actually going on. Well, the church has paid off. Why do I need to tithe? Oh, oh, so, so really, okay, how many of you would like to have your house paid off? Why? To free up finances. To do what? Live. We should be in the highlight of our days right now financially because everything around here is paid off by the glory of God. We don't, by God's grace, we don't owe a dime to anybody. And as soon as we let everybody know that it was paid off, the, 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 the giving, <laughs> along with a few other thousand that may have exited. I remember, I got to be careful here. Jay has a smirk on his face as if to say, I'm glad it's you and not me. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm telecommunicating here. I remember on one of the exoduses out of here of uh I think that one was around 320 or 350 people. And I think if I'm not mistaken, Jay's thinking, oh, I can't remember, but I got a mind like a steel trap. And I think that when, I think that, when that exodus took place, that there was about $30,000 a week went with them. That's a great thing to inherit. Then that was just the first exodus. Then there was another exodus that took place. And I think on that exodus, there's about 15,000 more went. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so glad you called me here. But I can tell you, by the grace of God, we did not lose anything. By God's grace, we didn't have to touch the savings account, not one time, because uh, finances were short. Why? Because this ministry has seed in the ground. This ministry has been faithful in giving of, of what comes in and making sure it goes out. And I believe that any time that you put God first, he'll always make sure that you're covered. And if you've got seed in the ground, he'll always make sure that you've got a crop. The harvest is coming up. Somebody just give God thanks and glory. And I'm moving on. He says we're cursed if we don't tithe. He doesn't say he curses you. We're cursed because he's not involved. Amen. It's not that he doesn't want to bless you, but until you bring him what is his, he's not going to get involved in what is ours. That's good. What does it do? What does the tithe do? Number 10 says, bring all the tithe into the storehouse that there might be food in my house. Try me now in this, says the Lord, that I'll, if I'll not open the windows of heaven for you and pour out such a blessing, there not be room enough to receive it. As I said before, my obedience to tithe brings my finances into alignment with the will and the word of God. Also, when I tithe, it removes the curse from my finances. I grew up in poverty. I didn't have anything growing up. Pizza to me was a slice of bread with ketchup, a couple pieces of pepperoni, and that processed American cheese on top in a little broiler, and that was pizza to me. I grew up in poverty. Many times when you go, grow up in poverty, it sets in. And you have a poverty mindset that you never have anything because you can't afford anything. And I remember that when we started tithing, it broke 
that poverty mindset off of me. It made me, I, I can do anything God wants me to do financially because he's my provider, I'm not. And when we tithe, it breaks that curse off of our life. It gives us access financially that we've never had before. Can somebody just say praise God? It bri- when we tithe, most importantly, it, bri- it keeps bread, it keeps food, ministry, vision flowing in God's house. We- listen, without it, God's body can't accomplish what it's called to do. Bottom line, you've got to have finances for ministry. I'm not begging. I'm just preaching a message to you. And lastly, what will God do when I tithe? Verse 10 says, try me now in this. Tell your neighbors, hey, you better do it now. I got, I got people leaving all over the place. That used to bother me. But I got to be honest with you. If God doesn't have your money, He really doesn't have your heart. I'm not judging. I'm just saying that He wants all of us, not part of us. I don't think I can say that. Do you just want part of your spouse and someone else to have the other part? He wants all of us, not part of us. Try me now in this, says the Lord, if I'll not open the windows of heaven for you and pour you out such a blessing that there not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit in the field, says the Lord of hosts. First of all, God says in this, in verse 10, he says, try me now in this. Try me means to investigate me. It means to put me, put me to the test on this one, God's saying. He said, try it and see. To be honest with you, you won't know. You won't understand. It won't make sense until you try it. I'm up here preaching that if you tithe, give 10%, God will take you further on your 90 than you could actually go on your 100. That doesn't make sense, but that's the way it works. But we won't know until we try it. Then he says, I will. God says, I will open the windows of heaven. He's saying, if you send something up, I'm going to open up and send something down. Praise God. He said, I'm going to pour out. I'm going to empty out. No blessing will be held back. God's size blessing. It, it, God's size blessing is like going to, to Niagara Falls with a cup and Niagara Falls is the blessing. That's what it's like when you just tithe. I'm talking about tithe and offering this morning. That when we send something up, he sends God's size blessing down. Then he says, not only will I open the windows of heaven, he said, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Rebuke means to chide. It means to move out or toss away. It it means to say, stop, that's enough. That's what God says he'll do. When you tithe, he says, I'll come and stand between you and the devourer, and I'll say, stop, that's enough. Maybe you've never been there. When you tithe, it puts a shield. And protects your 90 to go further than what your 100% would go. Some of you know what I'm talking about. It also keeps fruit of the ground. It talks about fruit of the ground. You can't have fruit without seed. When you tithe, you are sowing seed. Seeds produce a harvest. And as long as you're sowing seeds, you're always going to have a harvest for generations. See, now, 
Pastor Jay, do you collect your own, do you, do you collect your own seeds for the next year? I thought you did. See, nowadays, if you want, if, if, if you want to grow tomatoes, you go to the feed store, whatever, buy a tomato plant, put it in the ground. But in the old days, when they got a tomato plant from somebody, the next year at harvest time, they'd take some of the seed and they'd dry, they wouldn't consume it all. They'd take some of the seed, dry it out, so they'd have seed for next year. And as long as you keep doing that, you'll have seed for harvest for generations. What I'm saying is that when you tithe consistently, you are laying up treasure. For generations, it isn't just you, it's generationally. Your children will walk in a place financially that maybe they shouldn't, but it's because you did. I grew up with a poverty mindset. None of my kids have a poverty mindset. It's because it broke the curse. All my kids know they should tithe. Doesn't mean they all do, but they should. They know that. But they walk in a place because mom and dad have made sacrifices over the years. It's generational. Your lifetime will not be long enough to receive all the benefits and blessing of your tithe. We talk about generational curses. Hmm. We talk about generational curses and how they're passed down to, to generation to generation. But we must also realize there's generational blessings. Why don't we focus a little more on the generational blessings than we do the generational curses? There's generational blessings that can be passed down. And the way that you put one of those in operation is to tithe consistently because God's blessing is bigger than the devil's curse. My God, that's good stuff. One of the greatest things that I've ever done for our children was to teach them to tithe. Because it's just like I taught them to fish. You can give somebody a fish and feed them for a day, but if you teach them how to fish, you'll feed them for a lifetime. My God, that's good. <laughs> and I taught my kids how to fish. I didn't just give them a fish. That I taught him that when you give God what belongs to him, he'll keep food on your table. It may not come the way you want it, but he'll keep it on your table. It doesn't mean you'll never have financial difficulty. It never means you'll never walk through some lean time. It just means that he's your provider. That because I gave him what is his, there might be bags of groceries show up on my porch, but he's going to put food on the table, bless God. Because he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I know what I'm talking about. I've experienced it. Oh, God, I don't know if I want to do that. God provides. You don't get to pick how he provides it. And don't look down your nose at somebody else because they're just learning how God provides. Okay, all right. Food stamp program is there to help people when they're down and out. It's not a lifestyle. West Virginia has developed it as a lifestyle. But it's there to help people who's down and out when they lost their job and there's not enough coming in. It fills the gaps. And sometimes God uses that to put food on the table. 
But the devil whispers at you, oh yeah, look at what you're given and look what you're having to do. You show up there and you whip out the whatever. It used to be a book of tear out things and now I think it's a card. I don't even know anymore. Everything's a card or an app. Amen. Everything's a card or an app. But don't judge what you don't understand. Sometimes God will use that to humble somebody to get them in a place of sanctification or blessing. Use it to teach him. I remember when we didn't have food, didn't know what we were going to do. We were tithing. We were just trusting God. And we pull into the driveway one night, and there's bags of groceries on the porch. Thinking, oh, God, somebody knew. Somebody knew we didn't have money. You know, that's embarrassing, isn't it? Why? Why is it that we care so much about what other people think? Why is it that we allow our surroundings to affect what God is doing on the inside of us? God is in control. And do you want his provision or don't you? Don't be too proud to receive help when you need it. Because a lot of times that help is God's way of provision for you. And once we learn that, appreciate that, then we can move on to greater things. Last thing I want to talk about, Joey, I'm finished. Is it easy to tithe? Is it easy to tithe? It's easy to tithe when you realize that it isn't ours in the first place. When we realize that that tenth isn't ours, it's easy. It's easy to tithe when it becomes a joy to give it. And I mean that. If you're going to have a foul attitude, oh prune face, just keep it. Because God blesses a joyful giver. Not a prune faced one. <laughs> Look at your neighbor. Say, uh huh. It's easy to tithe when it becomes a joy. Joey, where are you at? Were you offended because I said something about that you like to spend money? <laughs> Now he doesn't. Now he's real. He, he's real frugal with he and Beth's money. He don't touch it because you got a clamp on it. Hey, I know. They think I don't know. Don't tell them. I know more than everybody thinks I do. I just don't always let on. You're not upset with me, are you? Not at all. I was gonna say you're gonna have to get over that. I love this guy. I will pick on him, but you leave him alone. I can. You can't. He's off limits to you to pick on. One day when I retire or the Lord calls me home and he's a senior pastor, get him! He's all yours. <laughs> you better find you a J. A joy to tie. The joy started for Tammy and I 32 years ago in 1991. And I'm not going to tell the whole story because I've already kept you too long. I should have got about 100 amens right there. Started with $2. That was our tithe. We were making ends meet by s selling wooden cutout soldiers as lawn ornaments when I got home right after Desert Storm broke out. 
I didn't have my discharge papers, couldn't sign up for unemployment, couldn't get a job because I didn't have my DD-214. They were still over in the Persian Gulf. We had no way of making money, so we, I tell you, when you don't make money and you got kids and you got a family, you got to do what you got to do. By God's grace, we didn't do anything illegal. We, we, you know, we, we, we were saved at the time. We'd been saved for about six months. <clears throat> Tam had grew up in a Christian home, and I grew up in a heathen home. And uh, I remember we started selling those wooden soldiers for 20 bucks a, a piece. Tam came to me and she said, I think maybe we better start tithe. We better start to tithe. I said, what is that? She says, when we give 10% of what we earn to God. I said, is it in the Bible? She said, yes. I said, then let's do it. This is the way I am. Everybody isn't like this. It's the way I am. If the Bible says it, settled. A lot of people have questions. Again, don't judge someone who has questions just because they don't have a mind like you. Walk with them through it. So every time we sold one of those wooden soldiers, $20, we take two, and we couldn't wait for Sunday to get here. Because Sunday was the day we got to take it to God's house and we got to put it in the offering plate. And once we started tithe, it's like more orders came in and we didn't have enough. We had to get her mom and dad and some other people to start helping us make these things. And God provided that way. But in my heart, somehow I knew that that $2, that $2 was helping to advance God's kingdom to, to go a little further, reach a little bit further, to accomplish a little bit more. And, and I remember in those days that I wished that I had more to give. Because I look at other people in the church and I knew they had a whole lot more money than we did. And, and I thought, man, I wish I could give what they gave. First of all, who said they were tithing? Not saying they weren't, I just don't know. Just because somebody looks like they're well off doesn't mean they're tithing. Hey, how many of you remember Miss Lee? Miss Lee Delgado. A little woman used to stand up here with her tambourine. And, 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 and this is how she'd worship and shake that tambourine. I couldn't understand much of what she said, but I knew it was Jesus. She worked uptown at uh, Embassy Suites as a, as a was it a cleaning lady? I think it, she worked as a cleaning lady. You you know what cleaning ladies make at the Embassy Suites? Not much, but for years, Lee Delgado was one of the top givers in this ministry. So don't judge a book by its cover. But it was $2. And we were excited. I wish I could give more. I looked at other people that made more money and I was thinking, man, if I could just give that much, but now I know that my $2 tithe was equivalent to somebody's $2,000 tithe. Because it's never about the amount, it's about the heart behind it. It's about the obedience. And Joey and I were talking the other day and we come to the conclusion that if you can't give a $2 tithe, why would God bless you more? Because you'll never give a $200 tithe or a $20,000 tithe if you can't give a $2 tithe. People say, well, I can't afford to tithe. then why would God give you more? Well, I'll tithe when I can afford it. That's like saying, oh God, I don't know. That's like saying, I'll have kids when I can afford it. How many said that? Then you had an oops. 
Guess what? You can't take it back. There's this thing called, I mean, about obedience and the heart what are we doing with what God has already given to us I'm not talking about tithe and offering I'm not talking about salvation right now I'm talking about tithe and offering I'm just trying to tell you a secret about how, how, how God will bless you and how he'll provide for you I'm not saying you'll be wealthy in the world's eyes. I'm not saying that you'll own uh, skyscrapers. or I'm not, I'm not saying any of that. I'm not a prosperity preacher. I'm very practical if you can't tell. It's about being a good steward of what he's already given to us. But the greatest thing you have to give this morning is your heart to the God is concerned about your heart more so than He is your finances or anything else. He wants to make sure that you're ready to make it to heaven. He wants to make sure you're ready to go. And as you stand this morning, how many of you, don't do not raise your hand, tap your neighbor on the shoulder, say do not raise your hand. How many of you are ready to go to heaven this morning? Don't raise your hand. And God forbid, I I don't don't say stuff like this very often, but God forbid if you were in a car accident on the way home and you didn't make it out of that car accident, is it well with your soul that you're going to heaven? If not, don't leave here in that state this morning. You make a decision to accept Him as your Lord and Savior. Don't leave that way. If you need help financially, come to Him and ask God to help you. If your marriage is in trouble, come. Whatever is going on in your life, bring it to the Lord this morning. And let Him make the difference. And you stop trying to be the difference. As Joey sings, as they sing this morning, You come and pray. If you've been a tither and God showed his faithfulness over the years, he showed his provision, if he's given you more than what you should have ever had, just come and give him glory and honor this morning and thank him for him being a good father. Go ahead, Joe.
Father, I pray you just continue to move in the hearts of people right now. I pray that you would just guide divinely, that your perfect will would be accomplished. And I ask it in Jesus' name. And amen. Last, last time I, I preached on giving, I think it was three weeks ago now, there were several people who had testimonies and wasn't planned. I just had a gentleman come up to me, told me about how God has had mercy on he and his family. And I said, would you be willing to share that? And he said, yes. You can't, you can't plan stuff. You can't prepare stuff like this. Go ahead. Come on up, brother. And you just go ahead and share what you shared with me. Sure is good to see you and your wife this morning. Well, about two years ago, we started making the decision to tithe. And in all my years, we live mostly paycheck to paycheck. When I started tithing, the Lord blessed my finances, made more money than I ever had, which allowed us to put money in the bank, to uh, buy a new car at age 61, first time ever. Then last year, in February, I had open heart surgery. So I went to work to six weeks last year. Bring a, we still tithe on what we got, you know, little short-term disability, the very minimum. He blessed us. I lost my job in February due to my time off because as soon as I started to come back, I injured myself, had to go back off. I had two surgeries last year. My wife had two years, two surgeries. And uh, he, he blessed it. We have made every payment on time, house, car, everything. Never did have to go on, like he said, welfare. Never had to ask the church for help. He made every payment for us. And we continued to tithe on what we did get this year. He has blessed us, and so it does work. Praise God. Thank you, brother. Appreciate that. Bless you. <clears throat> I don't know how he does it. I really don't. But he does it every time. But you got to trust him. I was talking with a, a young lady this week that she's contemplating a huge move in her life. Big decision. She's single. And she said, she was, uh, we pastored her when we lived up north, and she said, I, I just don't know. I said, listen. I said, anytime you face a big situation, it's scary. Because of the unknown. That's a lot of what fear is, is the unknown. But as long as we stay in the known, we'll never experience God. You got to step into the unknown to experience God. As, the, it, as long as you stay in your known finances, you'll not experience God. But if you step into the unknown, and sometimes it is scary. Sometimes you add it up on paper and it doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up. The Lord says, try me now and this says the Lord. And I don't know how he does it. When we moved here, when I, be, I went from a senior pastor to the associate pastor, I think I took a $45,000 a year pay cut. And I remember sitting on the couch every morning. I hate termites. I hate termites. I hate them with a passion. I know God has a reason for them, but I don't like them in houses. They'll tear it up. And there was already a thing when we bought this house that it was $320, no, $350 a year that they kept these baited traps around the house and they come and check them and it cost $350. And as long as you kept that active, if there was a termite found, they come and treat your home for nothing. 
And I remember, Johnny, I remember sitting on the couch. I mean, a year in advance praying, God, make a way for us to be able to pay that termite bill, to keep it in action. We didn't have that. We, we didn't have, hey, I wasn't buying Starbucks in those days. Couldn't afford it. We watched every penny. But I can tell you that God has made a way. He, provi he provided that $350 to keep those stinking termites out of my house. He will meet the need if you just trust Him. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that we would step into the unknown to experience You in great favor. Father, I pray that You would do what only You can do. Heal who you, the way that only You can heal. And Father, provide the way that only You can provide. Father, I pray that You would do now what is in the hearts to be done. We thank You for it. And we ask it in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. God bless you all. Thank you for being here this morning. We'll see you Wednesday night.